it's a moving target that it's a trend that is very rapid and very exponential uh, and it's different from past technological disruptions because it's pervasive and it's very fast the speed is very high, uh, very high that so, so high that uh, a lot of regulators are kind of scrambling to catch up uh, with the next thing that's happening how do we get the benefits but manage the risks we don't don't necessarily understand enough about the the way the digital dividends for development are, are delivered and we, we, we probably should learn from each other, from other developing countries and pick which best practices would work for us nationally and uh, which we, we should uh, also look for a regional uh, cooperation. I think catching up on the digital literacy is, is the priority, you know, just having basic digital literacy and uh, you, there are many ways you can do it. Uh, you could have, you could introduce it in the education system, starting from young. Uh, but many countries have tried to do it by uh, incent incentivizing use. You know, delivering government programs uh, through through digital technology, whether it's through their mobile uh, phone or through uh, creating accounts uh, that uh, where you will deliver the government uh, subsidy, things like that. Data flow has become a big issue because if we talk about ASEAN economic integration, ASEAN economic uh, community, the vision is, is about free flow of goods, services, investment and people. But we have, yet, we have yet to really have free data flows. We've already started talking about it. There is already an ASEAN e-commerce agreement. Uh, but I think it stops short of uh, really having seamless flow of data. Uh, to, e to enable uh, an, an ASEAN e-commerce market uh, and payments uh, to emerge. I think there's still a lot of regulations and restrictions that need to be addressed. Uh, and whether you, you have completely open uh, with subject to, you know, it's always subject to, uh, just like in goods, subject to security, uh, a safety issue. And in the case of data, there's an additional uh, provision, which is privacy. ASEAN has the promise of becoming one ASEAN e-commerce market, which can uh, give the scale that uh, countries like China or India have, and that will give us a competitive advantage uh, in this space. What does having the best security protocols mean? Uh, it, a, a lot of it has to do actually with uh, data localization, server localization. Countries like Indonesia uh, reserve the right to have uh, data localization, data server requirements. But now with a lot of conversation going on regionally and globally, uh, there, there's kind of, okay, we, we will allow some data flows. Uh, we will uh, only require uh, certain types of data to be uh, reserved uh, locally uh, based on high security considerations uh, and the rest medium security and lower security uh, can be uh, more free free flowing if you talk about inequality the biggest fear is of course job losses and it, it the data actually shows that 10 percent of uh, jobs in ASEAN will be lost uh, in the next 10 years due to automation, robotization. That's just an estimate. It could happen faster uh, depending on how the technology uh, evolves. Um, so, and, and a lot of that is in agriculture sector, as can be expected. Uh, in the unskilled, uh, medium skill, like routine work, repetitive work uh, kind of uh, jobs. Uh, and it's going to hit uh, the younger people more. So uh, we do need to have a, a policy of, uh, I think, a two-pronged policy. One is, it is about uh, reskilling, about teaching new uh, skills for new tasks. Some of the tasks uh, don't exist yet. Yeah? And secondly, you need to have uh, some kind of a social protection scheme, probably, uh, because, you know, for, for, from the time you lose your job and the time you are being reskilled. Uh, first of all, you have to be empowered to be reskilled. Uh, what are you going to do? You know, uh, and if we don't uh, manage that well, uh, we will have a lot of dissatisfaction and tension, uh, which will have uh, effect on not just the growth of the economy, but obviously on politics uh, and elections uh, and uh, probably policies that will uh, take us 
uh, more to restrictions rather than opening up. I think it's still going to be a scary ride. Uh, I myself feel that this is the, the one of the greatest anxieties that we face, and uh, it is something uh, not just governments have to be uh, uh, to be appraised of, but you know, companies, businesses, uh, entrepreneurs, small businesses, uh, and us as people, worker, workers, educators, schools. We all have to be uh, uh, thinking in advance. We can't be thinking, oh, this is something that's going to happen in the future. No, it's already happening. So we need to, to think through in each of our respective areas, what is it that we need to do to adjust? Uh, and adjust can mean very drastic, uh, but it really means uh, us thinking through uh, and, and uh, applying. It can't be business as usual, can't be just a linear trend anymore.